Coming up on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, scoring with rubrics. Hi, my name is Guy Trenin, this is Mobile Learning in the Classroom from TechEdge and today we're talking about scoring with rubrics. This is a topic I come back to every once in a while to see what's new, what are the websites and the apps that are still out there and provide ongoing support for teachers and for students because one of the things that I do want to highlight about rubrics is you can create them as a teacher on your own or you can have your students actually create the rubric which makes them more aware of what the expectations are, feel more participatory, and really help set criteria and understand the criteria from the inside. It's a great way to discuss uh, self-motivation, self-determination, and uh, self-regulation. So if you get the chance and your students are mature enough, I would go for it and have uh, the rubrics constructed with them after they have experience with a, a topic or a project. There are a few websites and uh, apps that help you create them and I'm going to go back to some of my favorites and a few new ones. The first one is RubyStar. This is a, a website I talked about before and it really helps uh, you with templates and producing new ones if you want. So what you can do is you can look at things that you might encounter in the classroom anyway. For example, six traits writing is fairly common. So you can have, a, I'll make my name here, and a, you can give it a name, and then you can choose the categories that will actually be included. So here, for example, is the category is word choice, and it will fill those up. What I love about this is that while this is set, you can actually change it any way you want. So you can go in, change the descriptions and play with them or create a whole new one. So you can create a new category and then go ahead and uh, define it the way you feel comfortable. So while they have templates and you can use them, especially for things that are established and you already like, you can also create new ones based on the old ones or just from scratch. So you can make a and you can see that you can make temporary rubrics and permanent rubrics and then share them uh, through email. And you can see you can have lots and lots of categories uh, or you can have only a few categories. So let me name this uh, project. Um, let's call it video just for the sake of argument. And then we can submit it. And now you can see that you could have lots of options, but it narrows it down to the few that you chose. In this case, I chose only one, so it's there. And then you can print, you can download, you can make it available online. So lots of ways for you to share it, either with your students or with other teachers, or just keep it for your records so you can know what uh, you want to use next time. You can see that this website does have some ads in it. So if you're worried about what students are exposed to as far as the ads, that's something that I would consider. But on the other hand, especially for teachers, use this is great because we can ignore that it's not too obtrusive the other thing I like about it is you can actually switch to Spanish there so you can uh, go to the same uh, sets of uh, rubrics but all translated to Spanish and again you can create in Spanish on your own great tool if you're working in a bilingual classrooms or you're working in a Spanish speaking uh, school or bilingual school great great opportunities with RubyStar the next one that I want to talk about is called Rubric Maker and it's rubric-maker.com and this one allows you to see, to use their library of rubrics. So you can see, for example, here you have story writing, science experiments, written reports, research reports, etc. Let's look at the elementary level, for example, at a poster. You can see that this is a classic four-point rubric with a um, Distinguished Proficient Apprentice and Novice is a way to especially talk to elementary students. You can see that the rubric has lots of categories that allows you to, uh, to do the scoring. It also has a, a self-evaluation post here that elementary students would be able to use really easily. My, post, my work has the information about the topic, it shows imagination and all of that. So you can see that there's a very simple yet 
a supportive way for students to do the self-evaluation before they present to the class and get scored by a teacher or even by their peers. It could work by the, peer, by the peers depending on the grade level and how much preparation and scaffolding you provide. Um, I do want to show, for example, what a research project evaluation is. This is again at the high school level, so this will include more demands and will also have a greater level of detail. And this is the kind of project that you can definitely share the rubric with students, but there's still that self-evaluation piece that allows students to do a quick checklist evaluation, making sure all the elements are there. The last thing that I want to talk about is actually on the iPad. This iPad app is called Rubric Score, and it's a very similar idea. Uh, you can get one rubric for free. If you want more than that, you pay a monthly subscription of 99 cents. If you use rubrics a lot and you do have an iPad in your classroom, that is a great way to do this. So you can see that this is an example here um, about classroom participation and beyond that in a class. And the way you score this is you just use your finger to uh, touch the right element of the rubric. It does the addition on its own and it really gives you uh, the total grade. So it's a great quick, once you create that rubric, it's really quick to grade on it and uh, being able to actually get a final score very, very quickly. So uh, you can add more rubrics if you buy a subscription and you can also edit the rubric. So you can actually go to the column and uh, row headers and do that work there. There's a YouTube tutorial that helps you do that, but you can also change the number of, um, the number of columns that you have. Um, but changing it, you can see is fairly simple. You just erase, you do regular editing. And um, this is the example rubrics. So uh, I don't want to change it too much. Uh, you can take away the comments. I like having comments because it provides some more meaningful feedback to students. So I like having it. You can always add it. Um, you can always take it away or you can always leave it empty. I like leaving it so you can have some uh, notes to students that they can uh, get from there. And a, a few other things that you can do with this is you can have classes in there so you can actually use it as a way to communicate with students, which is helpful if you set it up that way. And of course, uh, you can add it to Google Classroom. You can sync the scores to Google Classroom, uh, which means that even if you have a Google Classroom, but you want a way to integrate rubrics, this is a great way to bring it into that space and making sure that you are adding it to what you're already using as your learning management system. So today, on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, we talked about rubrics and different ways to integrate them into your class, and I'll see you next time.